Hi guys, my name is Jewel. I'm a product support engineer here at JTEC Digital. And today we will do a review of our 4K60 1x4 HDMI splitter extender. The 1x4 HDMI splitter extender allows you to input one source on the HDMI in, a local output to the HDMI out, and it has four UTP outputs to four different displays, one of which can downscale to 1080p. It also allows for audio extraction on the receiver as well as the transmitter and also supports bi-directional IR. All right, guys, we have our transmitter here and then four other receivers. Going into the transmitter's HDMI in, we have our source, which is a Roku Ultra. Okay, so now we're gonna connect the ethernet into the back of the transmitter, one end to the receiver, HDMI out to our display. I'm gonna continue to do that for the next one. Transmitter out into the receiver, HDMI out back to our display. I'm gonna do that for the third one as well. This one, we're gonna also extract audio to our soundbar, ethernet into the receiver, IR to control the source and as well as one more receiver. We're gonna connect the ethernet into the transmitter, ethernet into the receiver as well, and then HDMI out to our last display. Now we have all four connected where we can see our Roku source. The transmitter has a loop out port that you can use for local viewing of your source. Right now we have the loop out going to our monitor over here. And then also on the receivers, we have an output going to four other TVs. Currently our TV above me is 1080p connected to a receiver that is actually being downscaled to 1080p. The source currently is being sent with 4K resolution that the rest of our displays can support but this display to my right cannot. And so because of that, I have it connected to a receiver that allows for downscaling to 1080p. So for audio extractions, you wanna make sure you have your source going in. Check your source's audio format. Most options would be PCM, Dolby Digital, or DTS. So for audio extraction, we have two different options. On the transmitter, we have a SPDIF or optical output, and we have an analog output as well. The analog output can only support a two-channel stereo audio format, and the SPDIF output can support a digital format such as Dolby Digital or DTS or LPCM. So you can extract from the transmitter for a local extraction, or you can extract on the receiver for an extension extraction. So both transmitter and receiver have the capabilities to extract audio. This extender uh, splitter kit also has bi-directional IR that allows you to control your source on the receiver end, or it allow you to control your TV's power on off on the transmitter end. So one last thing I wanna talk about is the firmware port that is on the front of the transmitter. Here you can connect a USB port from the transmitter to your PC. There's a software that you can utilize to update the firmware if you need to. This may be necessary should there be any updates that the supplier has provided for the unit itself. Maybe you need to reflash the firmware in case there's something that is not operating correctly. But just note that there is an option to update firmware at any need necessary. So some frequently asked questions are, why am I not getting audio? The first thing you wanna look for is your audio format. So if you're connected to the analog output of the transmitter or one of the receivers, you wanna double check that your source is sending a PCM or stereo audio format. If it's an optical output that you're using on the transmitter or either the receivers, then your audio format can be as high as Dolby Digital or DTS. Another question that's often asked is, why am I not getting signal to my displays? The first thing you wanna check for is your signal resolution. Oftentimes, you have a 1080p or lower monitor that may be connected, while you have other displays that can support up to 4K. Well, luckily, this extender can downscale to 1080p. So if you need that to be done, you have to just connect your 1080p monitor to a receiver. If you're not able to connect a 1080p monitor to a receiver and you have to use your loop out, then you wanna make sure your input signal is set to 1080p resolution or lower. 
Also, you want to check for your HDMI cables if you're not getting signal. Make sure all of your connections are good, your cables are in good condition. Another thing you want to check for is your Ethernet cables that is coming from the transmitter over to each receiver. Make sure those are terminated correctly. Make sure they are proper specifications such as CAT6, CAT5E cables, whether they're shielded or unshielded. Because we have multiple cables coming through that may be ran alongside one another, it might be best to use shielded cables versus unshielded ethernet cables. Another thing to check for if you're not getting signal to any of your displays or maybe audio is not passing through is your EDID switch. First is by default set to 4K60, 420. If you want a higher color chroma, there are other options for 4K60, 444. There's an option for 1080p resolution at 60 hertz. And then also the last option is to copy the output on the uh, local output on the transmitter. So we have several different EDID options that you can choose from. Find the best one that best fits your scenario and that should help the communication between your source and each of your displays. One other frequently asked question is why am I not getting IR pass through to be able to control my source from the transmitter in to the TV? So first things first, we have our IRTX cable here that is connected to the IR out on our transmitter. First thing you want to look for is the sensor, and we want to have that as close as possible to our source's IR sensor that should look similar to this. That will be connected to the transmitter. On the receiver side, we have the IRRX cable going into the IRN on the receiver. The other thing to think for, to check for, is to have our sensor as close as to the TV sensor as possible. So most times there's a Velcro or a sticker or something that you can stick to the TV so that it's there at all times. And this is important to make sure you have a successful IR signal pass through. All right, that's it for our review of our 1x4 HDMI splitter extender. Please feel free to leave a comment below and like the video and subscribe for more videos like this.